My name is Barton Haynes. I'm a professor of medicine and immunology at Duke University. And I am the director of the Duke Human Vaccine Institute and the former director of the Center for Hiv AIDS Vaccine Immunology funded by the NIH um, and the new uh, director of one of two centers of uh, Hiv AIDS Vaccine Immunology for Immunogen Discovery, also funded by the NIH. You are working to try to get a vaccine, an HIV vaccine. When did you start this endeavor? I started this work uh, in 1985, uh, soon after uh, the uh, HIV virus was discovered, um, and began working on trying to find the regions of the envelope to which neutralizing antibodies were made. We thought back in 1985 this would be a very easy task, that it would take two years, and it would be like the hepatitis B vaccine. We would make the envelope and express it, and that would be the vaccine. But we ran into many problems, as you well know. Uh, what was the first problem? The first problem was the realization by the field that the strains of virus we started working with back then were not the relevant strains. They were grown in the laboratory and they had changed. And they were not like the viruses that were in the field, that were the ones we were trying to protect against. And so the neutralizing antibodies that we were inducing turned out to be not uh, potent or effective against the viruses out in the field. And so we had to start all over again, working with a whole new set of viruses. There are several scientists in the, in the world working to get a vaccine. What is different with your approach? What we're working on is uh, answering the question, when, when you immunize either animals or humans with the HIV envelope, that, and that envelope has on it the Achilles heels, the weak spots, that to which an antibody can be made, why don't you get those antibodies when you immunize a person or immunize a, an animal? And over the years, uh, we've asked the question, maybe it's ourselves, maybe it's the host that is preventing this. And so we've done a number of experiments and learned that indeed, factors in the host called immune tolerance factors, we believe, limit the induction of, the, of these broad neutralizing antibodies that the field has been trying to induce. And we found that the rare times that these antibodies are able to be isolated and are induced are in people who are chronically infected. And these people have been infected for many years, and it takes many years for these antibodies to develop. And when they do rarely develop, and you pull these antibodies out and you look at them, they're all very unusual. They either have very long uh, antibody combining sites, or they have lots of substitutions called mutations, or they cross-react with our own tissues or with other antigens other than HIV. All of these traits are uh, known over the past 20 years of basic B cell biology to be controlled by, in one way or another, by immune tolerance mechanisms. And so we've now taken these some, some of these human broad neutralizing antibodies and, and, and made recombinant mice, mice that only express these antibodies, which is the gold standard for understanding how an immune system handles these, virus, these antibodies. And lo and behold, indeed, these animals do delete these antibodies. So now our work is devising ways to get around this problem. Can you describe the virus? What is it? The virus, uh, the HIV virus. Well, the HIV virus is a retrovirus, which means it's an RNA virus that needs to go backwards to make DNA out of its RNA. And it is one of the fastest mutating forms of, of uh, viruses uh, on Earth. And that is another problem that we ran into early on, that the virus mutates quite quickly in response to a single antibody or T cell response. And uh, therefore, we have to have multiple mechanisms of immunity to control the virus. Is it a clever enemy? It turns out that HIV is far more clever than we ever imagined in 1985. And that's why now 27 years later, um, I'm still and the field is still working 
to, to defeat the virus. We believe now, after all this work, we fundamentally now understand what's wrong and why we haven't been able to get a vaccine. And now we're focusing all our energies on doing what we know we need to do. We now know what we need to do. Now we're focusing all our energy on figuring out how to do what it is we need to do. If you look on the world today, is it like s separate small groups of scientists like you who work or, or you're working together? If you had asked me that question eight years ago, the answer would have been several small groups of, many small groups of scientists around the world, each working independently to solve the problem. Seven years ago, an entity came together called the Global HIV Vaccine Enterprise. And it came together because about 150 of the researchers in the field all agreed that we were not moving fast enough, we were not collaborating enough, we were duplicating each other's efforts, and we weren't sharing information. And we all agreed we needed to do things differently. Then with the leadership of the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Disease and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, considerable amounts of money were put into this problem. And that's where the CHAVI, the Center for HIV AIDS Vaccine Immunology came from, and the Gates Foundation Collaboration for AIDS Vaccine Discovery came from. And these two organizations were set up so that they worked together extremely well, and the investigators, the 150 or so investigators in each one of these, worked very closely together. And so now we have a very collaborative field that is working, if not working together, at least to coordinate in order not to duplicate, and most importantly, to move faster. We have to move faster because every day so many people become infected with HIV. Will you be the scientist to succeed with your team? Um, I don't know. I hope that the work we do, if we're not the ones to be successful, I hope that the work we do helps someone be successful. What's important to me is to finish the job as quickly as possible and whoever in the field finishes it will be wonderful and be so important to prevent infections for those who are being infected every day. And can the job be finished? We believe that it can. We believe that some of the new breakthroughs uh, recently uh, in the HIV vaccine work have given us quite a bit of hope. The first breakthrough, uh, we believe, was in 2009 with the unveiling of the RV-144 Thai um, uh, uh, Alvac um, AIDSVAX BE uh, clinical efficacy trial in which a small amount of efficacy, an estimated efficacy of 31% was announced. Then a team uh, was put together uh, globally uh, to study the immune correlates, that is the immune responses that might have made that trial show some efficacy in order to understand what might we need to do to make that trial better and two correlates came out of that, and that means that two hypotheses came out of that trial for the field to work on. Another way to say that is two clues came out that we didn't have before. We were clueless before, now we have clues, and so teams are working to follow up on those clues. Now the second breakthrough that's happened in the last two years has been both the discovery of new, very potent, and very broad neutralizing antibodies, from chronically infected individuals, giving us a proof of concept that human beings can make these antibodies under certain circumstances. And secondly, the understanding why the other 80 to 90 percent of people don't make those broad neutralizing antibodies. And that's the tolerance work that I described. Now, putting those two together has given us, um, we believe, the insight to know how to design strategies to move forward that we're now testing now on how to get around those problems. When will there be a new breakthrough, do you think? Well, that's of course hard to predict. What I can say is that we believe that we're on the right road, that the strategies are being tested right now, um, and uh, we're optimistic because the strategies are based not on uh, empiricism and guessing, but they're based on 20 years of fundamental B cell biology and the new understanding of what's going on with the immune system when these antibodies do get made. Are you optimistic? I am I'm very optimistic and filled with hope because we now understand the face of the uh, enemy, 
Um, another breakthrough that has allowed us to understand the face of the enemy has been the work of Chavi to show that most people who are infected with HIV are infected with what's called a transmitted found virus that um, is uh, only one virion that goes across from an infected individual to another inf infected individual, another non-infected individual to cause the infection. And about 80% of people, it's only one virus. And so we don't have to protect against the millions of viral quasi-species in an infected individual. We only have to protect against the, the group of so-called transmitted found of viruses. And so we know now also, in addition to understanding why the right antibodies aren't made, we know the face of the enemy. Uh, the final question, will there be like a single shot of vaccine in the future as you see it against HIV and AIDS? Well, there are two strategies. Uh, one strategy is to make a vaccine that is specific for different regions, like the Thai vaccine. And we believe that the most potent vaccine will be a vaccine that will be generally ava available and useful to everyone because it will target these Achilles heels that all viruses have. And so the hope is, and what we're spending most of our time on, is working to induce broad neutralizing antibodies in order to make a universally useful vaccine.